Hi everybody, uh, today we're going to have a look at the electric system on the Grand California, using the showroom vehicle uh, behind me here and talk you through it. Uh, so we've already done a video with this, with the, looking at the ocean and the coast models. Uh, so just to recap, basically we're looking at the electrics as far as what you can plug in, where you can plug in, so your sockets, your 240 volt hookup. Uh, where that actually gives you power in the vehicle and the kind of things you can use it uh, for that as well. So if you've not seen the, uh, the video on the coast and the ocean, check that one out. I'll put a link uh, somewhere up here so you can get onto that one as well. Uh, so as with the other ones well, if we start with the cab area, so we'll go through the things from there. Uh, same principle applies uh, with the, the Grand as it does with the Oceans. And um, basically anything from here forward uh, works off the uh, vehicle battery. Uh, now just to confuse everybody, and I have pointed out a couple of times as well, but just to remind everybody as well that's on there, on the Grand California, the vehicle battery, so the, the battery which operates the engine and things like that, is actually in the cab. It's right down here. You never need to get into it really, but if you do, it, it would be down there in that centre console. Uh, and, the in, and the battery which is under the bonnet uh, is actually the leisure battery, so that's the, the, the main leisure battery which is under there which uh, you can get access to as well. So, uh, but we'll, we'll, we've done a couple of videos on that as well, we'll put a, uh, a link up on there as well, but just to uh, remind you that, that's where they are. Uh, so as I was saying, from the, uh, this pillar forwards, uh, all your sockets we're going to show you now uh, are all linked into that car battery side of it, uh, and then everything from here backwards, generally speaking, uh, is linked into the uh, into the leisure batteries or your electrical hookup and stuff like that as well. Anyway, let's jump in. So in the front cab area, we've got three 12 volt sockets, uh, which you know, one's located just here uh, next to the indicators, just in the bottom here. So you can plug something in and pop it in the cup holder or something like that that's there. The second one is on the far side of the dash which is over there. Again, that's probably quite handy for things like if you had a, a dash cam or something like that you wanted to put onto the side, or, or if you had a, um, uh, a display or a laptop or something like that, for example, you wanted to plug in somewhere, if you had it on, a, uh, on one of that type of um, car socket adapters. And then the final one, the third one, is down here. Uh, again, this would probably be quite good for like mobile phones and things like that. You'll also notice as well, uh, next to those two as well, is two USB-C um, adapters as well obviously for the uh, for the stereo and things like that as well that's in there uh, and obviously they would would charge as well uh, if you were plugged in say a mobile phone or something like that but obviously as I said your 12 volt ones is here there and on here so you've got three of those and as I said they're running off the uh, the battery system that's there. So before we actually get into the back uh, your first sockets are on the outside here so this drops down here uh, and then in here we have 13 amp socket and uh, two USBs, uh, and they providing a five volt output. This plug socket, as with all the ones that like this, uh, only work when you're actually plugged into the mains uh, in the back of the vehicle, which I'll show you again uh, before we finish the video. Uh, and obviously USB ones are at five volts all the time. So uh, quite handy for this bit. I think one of the reasons why they put these on here, uh, if you've got the satellite TV upgrade, that gives you an output here as well. So if you had a TV on here or something like that, for example, you could plug those into there. Uh, and again, anything with a USB socket, you can plug in as well. So inside the main cab area, so we've got another 240 volt socket uh, down here, 230 volts uh, socket, UK socket, which is down on here. Uh, again, so that's working when you're plugged into your mains power that's there. Uh, if you had mobile phone charging cradle, which is an option, that would sit in the bottom of this panel here. Uh, and that would, uh, rather than where this is white, you'd have a black mat that's in there, and that's what you, your induction charging is for your mobile phone. If you've got that on your mobile phone, you put that in there. Also as well, if you've got uh, satellite TV as an option, uh, on the side of this panel here, uh, you would have a 12 volt supply and coax socket as well for the TV. Um, the idea being, and obviously you can have that TV in this area inside as well, uh, if you were to plug in. Obviously if you don't have that option, this is completely blank, uh, as is the bottom as well, and it's just a nice little tray to put things in. Moving into the kitchen area, uh, on the wall here, uh, we've got two main plug sockets again for the electrical hookup plug sockets. Uh, so for example, if you wanted a kettle or a toaster or anything like that, you could put that in there and then plug them straight into the wall socket that's here. 
Uh, and then moving into the sleeping area, uh, you can just see on the far bottom on here, we've got again two USBs, which is about which will give you that five volt uh, supply that's in there. Uh, so they're really good for things like mobile phones, for example, and things like that you could plug in uh, if you're going to sleep uh, that was in there in the back, uh, back section there as well. Uh, so the final ones are in the back of the vehicle, so we'll, uh, we'll go and have a look at those now. This vehicle doesn't have the air conditioning system, but that is the one system that only runs off mains power supply. So you have to have electrical hookup at the side for the air conditioning system to actually work. And the final sockets in the vehicle are here in the rear. Uh, so if we look under here, uh, so again, we've got our uh, main UK plug socket that's here for when you plugged into the power. And then next to it is you've got your normal style, like on the front of the vehicle, uh, socket, 12 volt uh, socket, which is on there. Uh, and as it says, as the label says as well, that's got higher output. Uh, it's got 20 amp uh, rating that's there as well. Uh, you might find something like that, for example, is quite handy. I think I mentioned in the, in the California Coast Ocean one. Uh, when I go away, uh, when I go away, wherever I'm going, really, I take a portable fridge with me anyway, because if, you, if you're going out and you, uh, you can take it out, in and out of your vehicle quickly. So even though you've got your main fridge, that's probably quite a handy place to put something like that, for example. Uh, you could put in this space at the back and plug straight into there, uh, or anything like that, really, that uh, you might be taking that needs that extra power uh, to go into the rear of the vehicle. So that's where you would, uh, you would plug it into. Uh, so those are your main... Uh, those are all your main electrical where you can plug things into, etc. that's on there. Uh, we'll have a quick look at the outside of the vehicle, so we're going to have a quick talk about um, actually what's, how you connect uh, onto the vehicle. We've done separate videos on those before, uh, but we'll just talk a bit more depth and then I'm going to have a quick look at the electrical cupboard as well uh, and show you what's in there. So obviously if you're plugged into the main socket, uh, you've got your mains plug that's here, open your flap, pop it in. And then you're all connected and that's obviously then going to give you mains power throughout the vehicle uh, so that's going to put it into the um, uh, all the sockets inside your vehicle as well uh, if for any reason it's not working obviously there's a couple of things to check uh, if you plugged in at a campsite for example there'll be a trip somewhere on the campsite uh, there's obviously protection there make sure that's uh, switched on no problems at all as i said you've got your consumer box inside as well just make sure all those are all okay as well uh, and as long as they're fine you've got power going to it uh, you'll get power all the way through um, so this obviously as i said is giving you power to all those sockets inside what it's also doing as well is it's charging up uh, all your onboard batteries so your, your main battery and your uh, leisure battery as well so it's keeping them topped up as well so when you are unplugged uh, you know you've got power batting your batteries to keep them charged and things like that as well uh, at the same time so whether you've got a 600 or a 680 like this one uh, this particular cupboard here is the one which houses all your electrical systems uh, that are right up in the the back section in here and we'll talk you through those in a minute and just show you what they're for and what the different options are that's there as well uh, obviously on the 680 you've got this cupboard you wouldn't normally have this cupboard in a 600 but obviously it's got the one on so it's the smaller of the two uh, and at the very back of the cupboard here uh, we'll show you in a second but we've got your main master switch which is a nice big red switch so if you turn that off it'll turn all your camping electrics off completely uh, so that's quite good if you're going to store the vehicle for any reason or leave it for a little bit of time you can turn everything down powers everything down uh, so you're not going to have any uh, any problems with that as well you've got a consumer board in there which is similar to as you would have at home so that's got your individual breakers in there as well for any particular areas which might uh, be fused at that point as well and then the other uh, thing that's in there depending on whether you've got it or not is the solar control unit as well which is in there which tells you how those are uh, working as well I just wanted to share with you information from your electrical cupboard as well because uh, you appreciate it's quite a tight space in there as well so in current climate it's very difficult for us to film uh, in those show you what's in there at the same time as well so but what I did want to point out if you've got one in the handbook for these uh, it's on page 72 uh, I don't know if you can quite see that or not from on there but it talks about what the consumer unit is for and what it does but it also gives you your fuse locations as well which is on the other panel so that's the panel and it tells you all about them in that section now I've had lots of people ask questions about off-grid, uh, you know, what the different options are and things like that for, for the vehicle. Volkswagen themselves don't do anything, there's nothing that you can get uh, for power supply that's on here as well. Uh, if you check out, there's lots of YouTube videos and like that talking about being completely off-grid and I think I mentioned to you before in one of the previous videos as well, we've got a couple of customers who have got uh, generators, small suitcase generators which are, you know, 
Solbig, for example, that are on there as well, which you can then plug straight into the side of the vehicle, and then that gives you main supply. Uh, there's a couple of things with those as well, is, is obviously you need to get a good one, as I say, because you want it to give you that continuous power. Um, I'm not endorsed or anything like that for any of these products, it's just um, the ones that I've tended to see that are on there. Uh, the, the main one being the Honda, uh, I'm sure if anybody uh, has done generators before, Honda have been producing generators for a very long time. Uh, they're certainly not the cheapest in the market, but they do seem to be the ones that uh, uh, have got uh, a very good reputation for what they do as well. So that's one option. Uh, I'm not recommending it, I'm not saying that's what you should be doing. It's on there, but obviously, you know, people talk to us, I uh, talk to them about these things, and it's uh, a couple of customers have mentioned it now as having them, uh, and it seems to work quite well as well if you're in that off grid. Uh, situation and you know you haven't got access to that power supply uh, that comes out in the vehicle. Uh, obviously downsizing your generators it's something else to take in your vehicle size wise it's on there as well. Uh, obviously they only hold a certain amount of uh, fuel that's in them as well uh, but that fuel does tend to last uh, I think the run times on them is normally like 15, 16 hours, something like that at half load. Uh, and obviously you wouldn't really be using it for a great deal of load unless you've got that air conditioning system uh, that's in there that you're actually running off it as well. So uh, just a couple of ideas for you there. If you have got one of those, please let us know uh, and you let us know your experiences of using them because uh, I'd love to know uh, what your thoughts are on those as well. It just seemed to be... Uh, uh, a bit of a thing at the moment, we're buzzing the uh, camping world, people are talking about it more and more I think in the motorhome uh, side of things, so uh, let us know what your thoughts are on that, on that as well. Well I hope you've enjoyed today's video, having a look at the electrical system on the uh, 680 behind me. Uh, all this obviously applies as well to the, uh, the 600. Uh, there's a few little differences but that's only mainly due to the bed upstairs uh, which is on there which you've got a power socket as well upstairs but other than that they're all exactly the same where your power sockets are and the way that they work uh, so as I said I hope you enjoyed today's video if you have give us a thumbs up give us a like that'd be great uh, hit that subscribe button if you uh, if you don't already subscribe it really helps the channel out and we'll see you next time